Hello and welcome to another movie review. As always, I'm Kelly and I just got out of Jumanji, the next level. And for a soulless cash grab, this was surprisingly enjoyable. Yeah, there's no real beating around the bush with this one. This movie has absolutely no reason to exist. The last one basically finished out the story. It ended with them breaking the game, so why are we here again? Because the first one made money and Sony will jump onto pretty much any bandwagon to try to make money. Hence why they keep rebooting every single one of their series until something sticks. Ah, uh, I can't wait for the new Ghostbusters movie. Surprisingly, that trailer didn't look half bad. But we're talking about Jumanji right now. And for being a pretty soulless cash grab that it is, it does genuinely feel like a lot of effort was put inside of it. The emotions, if nothing else... Feel legitimate and even in a lot of cases earned. I really dug this movie. That's not to say this movie is perfect and in fact if I were to be completely 100% honest this movie is not as good as the last one. The last one was much better done and that movie itself is uh, not very well done either. But again like the first one this movie genuinely feels like it has a lot of heart. It's funny in a lot of ways and I never was bored in the movie. So yeah, take that for what it is. Even if it sounds like some backhanded praise sometimes, I still want to praise this movie for what it is. But for those who want to stay for actual spoilers into this, let's start with what I thought was good inside of it, and that is most definitely the acting inside of this. Like, everybody has to play multiple people inside of this, and they all do it pretty well, with one notable exception we'll talk about in a minute. But the standouts here are Kevin Hart and Jack Black. Each of them have to play like two or three people inside of this, and by God, are they just nailing it. Kevin Hart really does a pitch-perfect Danny Glover impersonation here, because I half the time had to double-check. Wait, that was Kevin Hart, right? Yeah, that was Kevin Hart. Not to say everything he says or does is actually funny, but I have to give credit where credit is due. I mean, this is just a pitch-perfect imitation. But honestly, better than Kevin Hart is Jack Black, who I didn't think that, you know, he could top playing the teenage girl he played in the first one. But by God, him playing Fridge in this one, you know, the big six foot muscle bound black guy, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> he was probably the best thing in the movie. Yes, it's a lot of complaining because that's what this character is. He went from being the short, useless backpack guy to being the fat, useless map reader. If there's ever a step down that you could go, he hit it. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, Jack Black played him perfectly. Even when he's sitting there complaining, I was glued to every word he says. In fact, I think the best part was when they're just checking their stats and everyone's like freaking out and doing all that and Oh, things are different. What are we going to do? Jack Black is just like, head hung over. Okay. Okay, let's do this. The stats get pulled up, and he doesn't say a word. He just looks at them. <sighs> yep. All body language. You can just tell every single thought going through his head before he eventually does his big freak out. You see it inside of the trailer a little bit, where he's just like... Heat, sand, endurance. How is this guy a character in an adventure game? And again, he's just playing it so pitch perfectly. He is just having fun with this role. And that's really like the tone of this movie and the thing I can say that this movie is. It's fun. Adolescent stupid fun in a lot of ways, but that plays into the actual theme of the movie, which I especially did relate with and like. But overall, it was just a breath of fresh air. In this season of Oscar movies, looking at the best of the best, the most impactful, socially conscious, this movie dares to just be a bunch of people walking from point A to point B to find the MacGuffin crystal. It does not give a shit about doing anything deeper than that. But it surprisingly does do something deeper than just that, even though that's pretty much what it is on the surface. But when you get down to the actual character motivations and things going on in the movie, I'm not gonna lie, it genuinely feels like this is a good continuation of the story. 
the plot basically, you know, them going back in the game because their friend went back in the game. Well, it does show you why he would feel like he wants to go back into this game. Video games at their core, like most entertainment, are escapist fiction. They're meant to distract us from our world for a little while, help us unwind, maybe work through some problems, and then let us rejoin society. And, well, this kid was beaten down. They got out of high school, they all kind of went their separate ways, but they're still trying to stay connected. And he's stuck in a dead-end job in New York City with shit breaking around, having to deal with the holiday season, which was a very, very, very good way of getting on my good side, actually showing what it's like working the holidays. Having to go back to meet up with family and his friends, who all seem to be doing a hell of a lot better than he is, especially on social media... Yeah, I completely understand where this guy's coming from. I felt this. You felt this. Is it any wonder that when this guy finally hits rock bottom, he instinctively says, you know, I'd much rather go play that game where I got to be, you know, Smolder Bravestone, the big old muscle-bound guy that could do everything. You know, maybe I just want to feel like him for five minutes. But just like the last movie, as well as the original... Jumanji doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you need. Whether or not that's facing your daddy issues like the original, or maybe realizing that being yourself is what really makes you attractive. In this one, he doesn't get to be Smolder Bravestone. He gets to be Meek, a new character who is basically him in real life, but with sweet lockpicking skills. There's an actual character journey from point A to point B examining, well, they're all kind of in a worse place than they thought they would be. Yes, this game is horrifying and it's terrifying, but yeah, it's what they need. So the movie's funny, the movie's got actual heart to it, it's got actual emotions it's dealing with. You know, what more could you want? A little bit. Let's talk about the bad stuff. Yeah, I kind of made a joke about how this movie dared to be stupid in an era when everything is being, you know, amazingly important, awesome, Oscar-worthy bait. But when you get down to it, this movie is really kind of simple and stupid and predictable. And yes, I would prefer if maybe they jumped over a couple of the cliched plot points. In the last one, it felt like they were wasting lives. In this one, they should know better, yet they still waste lives. The only ones who should be getting in these situations are... Danny DeVito and Danny Glover, who have never been inside of this video game before. But, eh, yeah, everyone pretty much wastes a life here and there. And those moments, especially when they lose their lives, they just slow the movie down. Every now and then, the movie just wants to stop, like in the middle of a travel section, and somebody has to talk and get in a pissing contest with somebody else, and it feels really like they're trying to one-up each other with jokes. Again, this feels a lot like Ghostbusters 2016, where they just have the line rama over the top that their characters would never say this, but they just keep going. Now, it is not as bad at that as Ghostbusters was, but the fact that I see it creeping in, there's a good 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes of this movie you could shave off with these sections that are just not funny. And you wouldn't lose anything. In fact, I think the movie would be rather a lot better. But if we're going to talk about the bad things, there is one big elephant in the room, and it's the one actor who isn't actually very good at this whole body-swapping acting thing, and that's The Rock, doing his Danny DeVito impersonation. Yes, it is as bad as it looked it was in the trailer. Are we in Jumanji? Where are we? I don't know. It's just, this is coming off awkward, man. And it really does suck. Because in the first one, when he's playing the main character, Spencer, he did a really good job. He brought a lot of charm to the character while still, you know, kind of making fun of himself and doing different things. But when he's playing Danny DeVito here, I just don't know what he's going for because... He's, he doesn't have the right cadence. He doesn't have the right accent. I just don't know. That's not to say it's the worst I've ever seen. And eventually, you know, Spencer does get back inside of the body because body switching comedy. It really does 
suck having to do this bad Danny DeVito impersonation. It just, it really just did not work. But even with that said, how is this movie as a whole? Is it good, bad, whatever? I think this movie was a fun time and I would highly recommend it. I know this is probably more generous than what I would give it normally, but my final verdict on this one, see it. Normally for something of this quality, I would say probably, you know, discount a theater or wait for Netflix. But honestly, with how much I related with everything going on here and given the Christmas season, I'm going to just bump it up. Go see it. This You will not be disappointed with this at all. You will have fun. You'll enjoy yourself. And hey, it's a good popcorn movie that when you get right down to it, you can actually think about and work out some genuine issues with. So highly recommend it. And that's it for me. Did you enjoy the video? Have you seen this Jumanji or the last one or the original? Tell me what you think about them in the comments down below. Let's get some healthy discussion going. And as always, if you liked what you've seen, be sure to hit the like button, share, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help my channel grow. And hopefully in this next year, I will actually be making money doing this, which would honestly be a dream come true for me. Also, I do stream pretty much consistently every single Thursday at 11 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. I may have to switch that up here in the next year. I don't know details yet, but I will bring them up as needed as it comes up probably in the next month or so. But for now, it is Thursdays at 11 p.m. Come join. We're playing Pokemon Randomized Nuzlocke of, Pokemon, of Platinum. Pokemon Platinum. God, I say Pokemon a lot in this take, don't I? And once we're done with that, I'll probably move on to one of the Final Fantasies off of my PlayStation or Switch, maybe. It's possible. And yeah, that's it for me, so I guess I'll see you all next time.